Okay. So, um, my name is Raiden Yano, and I'm from Miami, Florida. I came to Stanford specifically because I heard about the human biology program, and I thought, wow, this is a, such a great way to combine um, everything that factors into human health, um, not just the biological, but also the social determinants of health. And um, in fact, uh, I went through the HumBio core, and it was really when I took HumBio 4B, uh, which was environmental and health policy analysis, that I uh, decided, wow, this is the kind of work that I want to do, specifically looking at issues of access to care and health disparities. And after I did that, I went into my junior year thinking that I really wanted to have some abroad experience. And what was great about the human biology program, it was, it was so flexible in allowing me to do that. And in particular, through previous students that had participated in Stanford and Washington, I became very interested in the idea of going to Stanford and Washington. I thought, I'm interested in health policy. What better place to be than where the policy, the national policy is being made itself? And so I went abroad winter quarter of my junior year, which was winter 09. Um, and I worked at the office of the Surgeon General, in particular working on uh, the development of new federal emergency response teams that were specially capacitated to assist at-risk vulnerable populations um, following major natural or man-made disasters. And um, it was an extremely rewarding experience. I think for anybody who's interested in, in health policy within HumBio, doing the Stanford and Washington program is an absolute must. I remember taking classes in the evenings with uh, national health policy experts. I was taking a class on minority health and it was taught by the director of the Office of Minority Health within the Department of Health and Human Services. And I took another class on international health and development. It was taught by a woman who is a consultant to the World Health Organization and who travels to over 100 countries a year, helping governments and ministries of health um, figure out the best ways to organize their healthcare systems and um, the delivery of care. So you're, you get a chance to meet people that are actually out in the field being very active. So for me, that was definitely one of the, probably the biggest highlight of my time in Humbaya was going to Stanford and Washington. And I wanted to take it a step further. So I, I decided that I had learned a lot about the healthcare system in the United States through my classes and through my experiences in Washington, D.C. and at the Sur Surgeon General's office. But I thought I'm also interested in understanding how other healthcare systems around the world um, are organized and function, um, in particular how universal healthcare systems are able to provide care to everyone, which was something that at the time that I was in Hambayo and up until very recently hadn't been figured out, so to speak, in the U.S. There's still 47 million, 46 million uninsured Americans. My, my, my family, they're, 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 they're immigrants. They don't have health insurance. My grandmother had a tumor growing on the side of her head for two years and wasn't able to seek care because she didn't have insurance. So if there's one thing that I'm motivated by, it's just the fundamental belief that healthcare should be a human right. And that it's, it's the moral argument, the philosophical argument, do you believe that every human being should have access to a basic minimum of healthcare? And if the answer is yes, then I think the question of how much it costs on some level should become secondary, although still important. Um, but what concerns me about the new health law in particular is they basically expanded insurance to 30, 30 million Americans or so, but that, without really reining in costs, they wrote out a check to the insurance industry saying, we're gonna pay for 30 million more people um, for, you know, for you to make more money, but we're not, we, we haven't done enough to control how much you're charging for all of these patients. When I took uh, Professor, Professor Light's class on comparative uh, healthcare systems, uh, one, of the, one of the countries that we did study was J Japan, and I was amazed at how incredible Japan's healthcare system seems to be, at least on paper. They enjoy the highest life expectancy in the world, and that might be a result of lifestyle behavioral issues, but at the same time, it also has to do with um, their healthcare system. And I thought this is a great example to get some more firsthand exposure because I think it's one thing to base your opinions and inform your perspectives on what might be written. It's another to actually go and see it for yourself. And so that actually is what motivated me to apply for the Henry Luce Foundation scholarship 
uh, which allows 18 Americans every year to live abroad in Asia and work um, within their professional interest field, and mine happened to be healthcare and health policy, and I specifically had an eye towards Japan because of this very reason, because of what I had learned in Professor Light's class, and I'm going to be uh, working there at the Center for Global Health Policy at the University of Tokyo um, for a year, and I am very excited to see what I learned.